Hey folks, here to talk about pistol sights today. The big thing I'm looking for is I want durability in sights. I want rapid target acquisition because I'm interested in self-defense. And I'm looking for day and nighttime usage. First, let's visit durability. I shoot a Glock 19. The sights that I use are by Warren. They're Savigny sight, and they're the dual ampule. So it's got a tritium ampule on the front and one over the under. Some people call this a figure eight, uh, whatever, but that's what I like, and I'd like to tell you why. This isn't the end all be all. So if you're really excited about your sights, congratulations, use those. I don't really care. And uh, I just, to me, this stuff's tools. You're the weapon. This is just tools. and. Some tools work great, so so anyway, I don't get super bogged down around this, but I, I do like this, and so this will be some conventional wisdom of why. So I mentioned durability. First off, the Glock factory sights are terrible. They're just little pieces of plastic. Uh, the rear sight can walk on you, and so uh, what you can notice on some of them, in Glock 42, Glock 43 sights especially, they'll just push over and out, and so all of a sudden you're like, why am I hitting way over there? Well, probably because you're a bad shooter, uh, but uh, if it's not that, it may be because your sights have already started walking on. So I want sights that aren't gonna move. Also the front sight, uh, when they're plastic sights, like the Glock factory sights, they can get dented. So it, it was a nice sharp corner and now it kind of got hit a little bit. And so now it's a little slope or something else like that. Also, I don't like Glock factory sights because it's not intuitive to the eye. It's visually distracting and then, okay, I've got a circle here on a rectangle that goes inside of a rectangle that's surrounded by a U. And so I like put a dot in a bucket and then I've got these angles and like, what am I supposed to look at here? Is it the dot or the angle here or the angle here or the bucket? Or it's visually distracting. I don't want something grabbing my eye and putting it on the rear side. The way you're supposed to shoot a, a, a pistol, the general wisdom is some people will say, hey, in a gunfight, you're not gonna be able to look at your front sight, just point and shoot. And I don't like that, even though uh, I can do that at close range and run a uh, gun, but I generally, the common wisdom is look at your front sight post. So the idea is you look down the little valley of the rear notch, you see this mountain peak on the other end, you line up the tops of each, so you're cutting your target in two, and you're framing this front sight in between the rear notch here uh, perfectly. Now, what I don't want to do is look at my rear sight, and I don't want to look clearly at the target. Rather, I'm focusing with perfect visual acuity and a hard focus on my front sight, so this is really clear. This is a little fuzzy, and the target's a little fuzzy, and that shouldn't scare you. You've already identified the target as a threat, otherwise you wouldn't be pointing a, a gun at it. So uh, once we're looking at a target with perfect visual acuity, I present and I switch my focus to the front sight right there at the last moment and I can make a real good accurate shot by uh, detecting nuance difference between my front and rear sight. And if you're looking at your target, you won't be able to see that and you'll always be a sloppy shooter. Uh, for a Glock, you know, you have this big white U right there and it grabs your eye. I don't want anything drawing my eye to this. I want my eye to be drawn here and not so hard that I can't see my angles uh, either. It's just enough to grab my attention on the front sight post and then let it go so I can shoot my angles and I don't focus on the dot. You're supposed to look at the very top corner right here on the uh, front sight and the very top corner right there. That's where I'm looking is right at the top and look at the angles, not the dot. For durability, sorry, that was a little bit of a rabbit trail. For durability, uh, I, I like steel sights. These are, uh, this is a thinner sight for rapid target acquisition. I'll, I'll visit in just a moment, but it's thinner, it's taller, and it's solid steel. It's got tritium ampule in there for nighttime, and another one here. This is solid steel as well. And if you look in the back right here, there's a little Allen key that allows you to tighten down the rear sight so that even if you hit it, it's not going to walk any and this front sight as well. Now this is good for a few reasons. One, you're not going to have pistol sights walking on you and leading to inaccuracies. Two, uh, the front sight's gonna uh, maintain those nice rigid angles so that you can line everything up well. And then three, if you ever get injured and you have to manipulate your pistol one-handed or something else like that, I've got sharp sights which can catch on a belt or something else like that so I can quickly uh, get my gun up. So uh, I, I want something durable that can take a little bit of a beating. Uh, these are pieces of art and, and, and whatnot. These are tools. You should be able to bang around. If, if, if you're having to be really dainty and fragile with your gun because it's really delicate, you need a better tool. 
I, uh, second thing I mentioned is I'm interested in tactical accuracy, not bullseye accuracy, which means I don't care about shooting the eye out of a crow at 200 meters with my pistol. What I care about is, okay, if, if I'm going to get in a gunfight and I want to stop the threat, uh, imagine this. Where, if, if you're going to shoot someone in the heart, where do you hit them? Left ventricle, uh, right atrium, uh, the aorta. Oh, and many of you be like, who cares? It's the heart. And I'm like, yeah, that's, that's the point. That's tactical accuracy. Enough to put the threat down. Somewhere in the cranial ocular cavity, right here. That, that's where I want. And that's uh, not super big, but it, it, it's big enough. It's got some margins, like whether it's here or here or here. I don't care, wherever. Uh, and, and so that's what you're looking for for tactical accuracy. And if you're trying to get more accurate than that, it's a waste of time. If you're shooting a group this big, you could be faster, right? I, I ask people this in my pistol classes all the time. Okay, what, what, would, what type of group would you rather shoot? So you're gunfighting someone, uh, and many people are like, whoa, I don't plan on ever gunfighting. And I remind them in self-defense, you don't get to choose whether you ever gunfight. The other person chooses. You're just responding, right? Uh, so anyway, you're, you're going to shoot a group against somebody, and uh, you can either shoot this one. One, you can shoot a group this big in two and a half seconds, or you can shoot a group this big in one second. Which do you want? And many will say, oh, the one second. I'm like, yeah, me too. <laughs> Sign me up. And welcome to tactical accuracy. Most gunfights are happening at three yards uh, with three rounds within three seconds. So the precedent needs to be, yeah, we want accuracy, accuracy, but we need accuracy uh, very, very quickly under stress. And if you can't be accurate quickly and under stress, your accuracy is worthless and you're never really going to get the chance more often than not. You get it? So I need something that's really, really quick on target. To accomplish that, these sights are very, very skinny on the front sight and very, very tall. So I can quickly pick that up through this rear notch and it lets in big bars of light on either side of the front sight as I look down this valley of the rear sight. So it's quick. I mean, it's not lining it up to be perfect like this is at the exact distance of here. So I've got a little wiggle room and allows me to, buy, uh, to gain a little bit of speed, which is what I'm looking for. Another reason I like these sights is I've got this white circle here, which is enough to grab my eye peripherally as I present. I'm looking at my target, 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 target. Aha, I noticed this out of my peripheral vision, but I'm still looking at the target. Target, 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 switch. And my eye jumps as soon as the front sight occludes the target. My eye switch to the front sight, grabs on it. So I need, uh, I like something that's uh, loud enough like this white circle to be able to grab my attention but I don't really like green yellow orange or something because a lot of times those colors for me are just so loud I can't really see the angle very well now if I was uh, in broad daylight a lot of guys use fiber optics and, and whatnot and their lower sights and they grab your attention really well and when you're shooting steel on the move those, those can be really great but I also don't like fiber optics because one is I'm not Built, I'm not building this for competitive shooting, and fiber optic sights are more fragile than steel sights. So it's a different mission. I'm not talking about competitive shooting. So if that's what you like and that's what your mission is, great, fantastic, love it, yay for you. Uh, that's not what I'm doing here. So now also I'm looking for sights that'll be good to shoot at nighttime. So tritium ampules, it's a radioactive material that always glows. So you could put this in a box or a hole for a few years, pull it out, and it's still glowing hot. It doesn't need to be charged or anything always good to go it'll dissipate over time as the half-life of tritium reduces it a little bit more and a little bit more and it's getting dimmer and dimmer over time but you got years before that really starts to affect you much uh, I like a dual ampule one and two uh, the double ampule on the rear sight right here a lot of times will be one here and then one here and when that's true it's a little bit loud for me and it, it tends to I think I, I feel it you know just subconsciously pulling my vision there so that I'm not really looking at the hard angles that I should. So having it down here out of the way is a little bit better when I'm doing daytime shooting. For nighttime, what you'll see is an over under dot. And if you see over under and you're good to go, right? Now, the reason I really like this other than the elimination of visual distraction while shooting daytime is when shooting through night vision, you can see your tritium ampules and it is uh, far more advantageous to shoot a dual ampule rather than a three ampule. Uh, so I like it for night vision use. I train a lot of tactical teams, military law enforcement. Uh, and so when you're shooting night vision, this is a better option. If you want to know why, take a night vision class. Now, um, th this is not my pistol. This is somebody else's. Uh, my pistol right here, I got uh, some knockoff ones. Uh, or not knockoffs. They're, they're, still not, they're still good sights. These are by Ameriglow. They're eye dots. Uh, so you see right here. 
There's the notch, there's the dual ampule. It doesn't have the white ring around it uh, that I like. Uh, so uh, I, don't, I don't prefer these as much. But what I noticed about these, they also don't have the little Allen key. So you're saving a little bit of money. Uh, I think the Warrens are like 130 bucks. You can get these at Taloric Group online. That's where I'm at right now. And this is where I got my sights. The Ameriglows, I tried to save a few extra bucks, but they're sharper angles. So on my shirts, they're getting all these tiny little holes from where I carry uh, appendix. So my shirts are getting ruined. Whereas the Savignis don't seem to be marking up my shirt as bad as the sharper angles of the Ameriglows. Other than those things, these are working just fine. I've got a little bit of buyer's remorse, but Ameriglow makes good sights too. I'd, I wish I'd just uh, gone up and got the Savignis. And uh, when somebody sends me a bunch of money, I'll go buy some more. Hey guys, thanks for staying tuned. Like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. Uh, train hard, but train smart.